want to take a few minutes t tonight of your time, and I want to minister to you on the precious Holy Spirit uh, one more time. We, I've really been enjoying these Tuesday nights. Amen. But praise the Lord. There's information and revelation and knowledge for us to, uh, uh, to have, and uh, it's so important that we know chapter and verse, that we know, you know, it's being baptized in the Holy Spirit is one thing, amen, but to know references and to know, you know, praise the Lord what the book says about it. After all these years, tongue talking, do we still remember? Praise the Lord what the book says, amen. And it's so important to remember what the book says, amen, because how many people, you know, that have walked with the Lord any length of time, would agree that you can put your own spin on things very quickly. <laughs> Nobody's going to own up to that, but you can. You can because we, 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 we live by preferences. Amen. And, and the Bible really brings us back to that level plan field. That was wonderful tonight, by the way. I just encourage you, Dawn. Amen. That was wonderful. Come on. Can you really encourage Dawn and the team? Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. It's good to get Sam rested tonight. Amen. He's got a big weekend. Amen. He's got a big weekend right up ahead of him. Praise the Lord, as do we all. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's just good to be in the presence of the Lord. It's just good to come together. And online doesn't give you that. <laughs> I don't know how much, you know, how much you try to squeeze it out of online. It just doesn't give you it. You know, there's people all over the place, you know, that, that are letting us know and people that they don't have churches like this in their area. And they, they try to get everything they can out of online. Praise the Lord. But we're standing with them tonight. In the name of Jesus, precious people from different parts. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, look at you and say the best is manifesting. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Do you believe that? The best is manifesting. Praise the Lord. Well, glory to God. Amen. Well, I want to get into this tonight. I want you to go to Acts chapter 2, verse 4, please. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Glory to God. Thank you, Don. Maybe come on down here and rest a little while yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if Andrew wants to play, he can play and let you rest. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He needs all the help he can get. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. <laughs> joke, praise the Lord, just a joke, amen, they all know me as that behind the scenes, so praise the Lord, so Acts chapter 2, let's go there, and let's take a look at this tonight, um, I believe the precious spirit of the Lord is doing something so powerful among us, Sunday was just, you know, off the charts, and uh, I just thank you, I thank you for your participation, your cooperation, you're yielding to the things of the Spirit, not just sitting and hoping, you know, that God touches you, but reaching for that. Amen. And I believe in the reach, in that hunger, in that lunging forward or that leap forward, something of a beautiful heavenly transaction takes place within us. Amen. I know something happened in me Sunday, and uh, I receive it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anybody else witness that? I mean, just something happened. Praise the Lord. I want you to look at Geneva and say, never be discouraged in the name of Jesus. Now, I know that we make that as a declaration tonight, but you know what? Discouragement wants to come once in a while. We know that. If you had a sickness and you were delivered from that sickness or you were freed from that sickness and that sickness tries to come back, don't allow your world to fall apart. Just because there's a symptom, just because there seems to be the realities of something that's trying to come against you again, doesn't mean to say that it's all coming back. I declare over you in the name of Jesus, just exactly what Nahum said, that the thing that came the first will never come the second in the name of Jesus. You must never forget that, that demonic operations, they want to come back to see if they can get a foothold. That's why we must continually 
keep our foot. By the way, John, you're looking amazing. You are looking amazing. I'm just telling you that right in front of all these people. I, I meant to tell you on Sunday, but you are looking amazing. Praise the Lord. Amen. But what the enemy uh, tries to do, I would love somebody to tell me if, 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 if you had went through what he's just went through, I'd love somebody to tell me I'm looking amazing. Amen. But you could go ahead and tell me right now. You know. <clears throat> What the enemy, you know, I've, I've veered off my, but I got to go with the spirit. What the enemy tries to do is, is that, he, you know, I, I know the devil can't be everywhere. So when we talk about the enemy, we're talking about cohorts. We're talking about, we're talking about agents of evil. And so say that you got healed, you got delivered from something, you know, you got free from something, whatever that was, you know, a spirit of infirmity, cursed at the root, you delivered, you're free, yes. right? Yes. So what happens at times is that once you get out there a little bit, what the enemy tries to do is he tries to come back, see, see if there's any room. See if he can get back in because he knows, he knows scripture and he knows that he can make the latter worse if he can be received. <laughs> this is what scripture says. So therefore we have to keep him where? Under our feet. So what I did yesterday in my session for prayer at noon is that the enemy is not up here somewhere on your shoulder. Amen, we were raised up far above all principalities powers. Amen. And everything was placed beneath the feet of Jesus. So therefore, then, if it's under the feet of Jesus, then it's under the feet of the church, of which we are. So therefore, demons are not up here whispering in your ear. If they are, flick them off, get them under your feet. Amen. You're not going to suffer that in the name of Jesus. So if there's things trying to buzz about you, knocking at your door to try and get back in again, say, you know, you get free from pain or you know, all discomfort, say inflammation in your body had subsided. You hadn't been experiencing inflammation in your body for a period of time, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're starting to feel little, little, yeah, little twinges, just little, just little, oh, what was that? You know, you just, you just right there and then rebuke it and say, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> you're not coming back anytime. Can I have a big amen? Amen. amen? This is how you do it. This is when you do, you know, phone a friend and say, you know what, get in agreement with me. I had a symptom try to come against my body today. There's no pride in this. I had a symptom try to come against my body today. I'm just telling you, get in agreement with me right now. I can't come back. Amen. What are we doing? One will set a thousand to flight. Two will set 10,000 to flight. We're, we're, we're ganging up against those things. It's the same with prayer. If God has touched you mightily in prayer, you have to fuel that. You have to stir that. You can't wait on a feeling coming all the time. If you do, you, you'll become disillusioned. You, you, you have to stir that. You know, a friend's hand is not all, always there to place on you to stir that up, right? Pastor's hand's not always on you to stir that up, right? So therefore, you have to stir it up yourself. And that, that you can do. Ask me how I know. I've done it for years. I've walked about at times, you know, just even in present days, just walking about, you know, even upstairs, you know, just walking about, walking about, stirring it up, stirring it up. Sometimes you'll see me out the back there if you're right there with me. You'll see me, the guys give me time on my own, but you'll see me, I'm just walking, walking, stirring, constantly stirring, walking, constantly stirring. What am I doing? I'm priming the pump in the name of Jesus. Why? Because I want the oil to the top. <laughs> Amen. We want the geezer to blow. We want it to blow. Look at your neighbor and say, we want it to blow in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So just lift your hands with me right now and say, I refuse sickness at all of any sort in the name of Jesus. 
I refuse to take anything back that I have been delivered from. So just rejoice right now in the name of Jesus. Just rejoice right now. We take authority over headaches. We, we take, you know, sometimes headaches, headaches, sometimes headaches are not because you've eaten something or sometimes headaches are spiritual. Sometimes it's just like spiritual. Sometimes, you know, at times I've come to church or like things and I was fine until I was coming towards church and then a bit of a headache started to come on me. Well, I'm not the only one these things happen to. What is the enemy trying to do? The enemy's trying to take me off my A-game. Well, you'll not be able to shout tonight because you have a migraine. Well, I declare it. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Come on, say this with me. I'm not prone to headaches. I'm not prone. I'm not prone to migraines. In the name of Jesus. And let's rejoice. Thank him right now. Thank him right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank him right now. In the name of Jesus. Buffalo Solomon. It's real. <laughs> it's real. It, it's not a figment of your imagination. It's real. And as I say, the devil does not camp out at millennial. Jehovah Shammah does. <laughs> but, but the devil can't. So don't be fooled by it. The devil cannot be in more than one place. <laughs> so for all of us to say, man, the devil was at me today. You have to understand that it wasn't the devil, possibly. I mean, it could have been. But the most likelihood would be is that it's somewhere down the ranks. Messing devils. Evilness just demonic, impish workings. I'm not in any way diminishing what they can do because they're sinister. But to think that the devil just keeps camping out at your house, I mean, you, you shouldn't really give yourself that big shot title that the devil has to be at your house. Amen? Because I declare it, he's not at mine. <laughs> Amen. So every time you say, man, the devil was banging on my door. Today. No, no, no. He's not allowed to bang on my door. <laughs> so shout it out. I'm free. Amen. Whom the sun sets free is free. Indeed. Come on one more time. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So if you're here with a headache tonight, we serve notice on it. It leaves in the name of Jesus, all tightness of the, of the, of the head, of the, like a tight band around here. We take authority over that right now in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' precious name. <laughs> Hallelujah. We give him praise and honor and glory. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. Amen. For the Lord is good. Let's all agree that the clock stops. Hallelujah. So Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Let's take a look at this. Acts chapter 2, verse 4, and it says this. And they were all filled, diffused throughout their souls with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other different foreign languages, tongues, as the Spirit, capital S, kept giving them clear and loud expression. I love that. Clear and loud expression. So this, this praying muffled like it has to stop because the spirit gives them clear and loud expression that's why I say to people is uh, lift your voices let your ears hear you pray let the people beside you hear you pray I mean, that just annoys people at times because they're just so used to praying like, I don't know what your prayer, would, prayer time would be like in your house alone with the Lord, you know, but you just sitting there. And 
Now, if I was the Lord, I, I wouldn't want to come. I, I just, I would be like, you know, hello, like you have the power of the universe in you, and you're just like, it's not supposed to work like that. Nor are you supposed to be sitting there like a foghorn. Uh, and you're on your own and your veins are sitting out on your head. <sighs> no, that's, <laughs> that sounded like Uncle Fester was coming out of the... <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you know that salvation is God's gift to this world? Amen. To all of us. To all of us. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is God's gift to us, his children. Salvation is to the world. There's not one person left out. But the world cannot receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit unless they have received Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. I just can't believe that people would still live in 2024 without the blessing of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, without the enablement to be able to operate in the things of the Spirit and to operate as God himself would operate, to be able to work with the gifts of the Spirit. I, I can't believe that people would deny God the right to do these things in their lives. I want you to take these scriptures down. I want you to look at them on your own time. I've taken up too much time tonight, so I'm just going to jump here. But you definitely want to take a look at Joel 2, 28 and 29. You definitely want to look at Acts 2, 17 and 19. These will all be put up on Millennial Community page for you. Zechariah 10, verse 1. If you're not on the Community page, please go to Guest Services tonight and get yourself on there. Because a lot of the scriptures, a lot of the things that we do here are posted there. Amen. So that you, a lot of people did ask for the scriptures from Sunday night. Did you enjoy that? Word of the Lord, leap on Sunday night. Amen. All those scriptures. Are they posted? Where's Bev? Are they posted already? Are they posted yet? I give you all the scriptures. Did you post them? Pardon me? Tomorrow they will be. Stretch your hands towards Beverly. No, no, you don't need to say nothing. <laughs> what you're meant to say is you're living in the past. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everybody say this, Beverly. Beverly. You must do better. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> How many people love Beverly? Come on. Isn't she amazing? Praise the Lord. Zechariah 10.1. Remember, we're not allowed to get offended in this church. I'm just being funny. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Remember Sunday's message? We don't have to justify all of those things. Hosea 6, verse 3. Hosea 6, verse 3. Amen. The prophecy that in the last days, what did it say? The anointing of God will greatly increase. Say that with me. The anointing of God will greatly increase. Say it one more time. The anointing of God will greatly increase. I'm ready for that. The Spirit of God will be poured out upon all flesh, all nations, all people, and all denominations in the name of Jesus. The gifts of the Spirit will be in greater manifestation. I receive it in Jesus' name. That means if the Spirit is going to be in greater manifestation, that's going to happen in my life. In Jesus' precious name. These will be the days when the people of God will receive visions and spiritual dreams. Increased spiritual manifestations. Amen? I'm going to say that again. These will be the days when the people of God will receive visions and spiritual dreams increased spiritual manifestations. Amen? These are days where we're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen? And I believe they will increase. Shut it out. They will. 
increase. <laughs> One more time, I says the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. They will increase. Amen. I receive this in my life. In the name of Jesus, not just looking over here, you know, at what God's doing in my brother, what God's doing in my sister. No, God's moving in me. In the name of Jesus, signs, wonders, and miracles. I am a sign. I am a wonder. And I am a miracle. In the name of Jesus, touch your body. Amen. I'm healed, whole, delivered, set free, sanctified, separated, consecrated. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. I believe that these are the days of the greater works ministry. Greater works than these shall you do. Amen. These are the days when the prophetic ministry and the gifts of prophecy will be multiplied and increased. The fivefold ministry, God's servants will be given a greater anointing. Well, praise the Lord. I receive that in the name of Jesus. Do you know why we, we brought Joseph Z in? Because of that prophetic gift that's on his life. Do you know why we're bringing Jesse in Friday night? Because of the gift of the evangelist. Amen. That's why we're doing these things. It's not just to have meetings. Amen. When we do these things, especially coming into a place like this, we become balanced in areas. These gifts add things to us. I mean, I can, I can do my best and I can bring what I have. But you bring an evangelist in, amen, that sits in the office of the evangelist, Man, amen. Now we have that operating. Now we have that impartation. You bring the prophet in and you allow that gift to operate. Now, come on, do you understand this? That's what we're doing. We're not bringing in like just big names. Amen. We're, we're not just bringing in big names to draw a crowd. This is relationship. We've been relationship and with partners with Jesse and Kathy for years. I don't know how many years. Coming up in 30 years, we've been partners with Jesse and Kathy. That's what it is. That is what is partnership. We stand together. You know what I learned about partnership all those years ago? That when I go to heaven, that everything that Jesse did, I share in that. And on my file, everything that's in Jesse's file is in mine. That is partnership. I partake of that. Let's receive this tonight. That is the power of partnership. When people forget the power of partnership, they just think it's a financial transaction. And they think, oh, he's out to get my money. Well, there's nobody out to get anybody's money. We just believe in the power of seed time and harvest. We believe in the law of sowing and reaping, we believe. That's the lie of religion. Yeah, it's the lie of religion told. Amen. But thank God we're free from that. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Shut it out. I'm free. I'm free. From, religion. from religion. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> partnership is, is powerful. I do hope that your partnership with, with, with ministries and, and different gifts, because that, that will flow in your life. Amen partner with Brother Copeland for all those, all, all those years as well. That, that anointing flows into our lives. Amen? Not just because he would be my spiritual father, but because of the power of partnership. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Everybody give a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. In the year 1866, Michael Baxter, founder of the Christian Herald, in his book, Baxter's 40 Wonders, wrote these words, increased faith to work miracles and unparalleled boldness in the preaching of the gospel will characterize the coming Pentecostal outpouring of the Spirit in the last days. I declare it that we are walking in this, in the name of Jesus. Take this scripture, 1 Corinthians 4.20. 1 Corinthians 4.20. Again, these will be up on Millennial Community page. But 1 Corinthians 4.20 says this, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Everybody say that with me, in power. Do we have the right to expect power? Yes. In Ephesians 3.20 it says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power. power. Everybody say that with me. Power that works in 
us. It, it works in the person beside you, but it's also working in me. There's power in there. Even if I haven't seen much of it, it's still in there. And one of these days, I'm telling you, what, whatever happens, some of this power is going to be unlocked to do tremendous things for the kingdom of God. We receive this. Hallelujah. We believe it. You believe it. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 4 and 5. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit, capital S, and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And that's what we fight constantly. That is the fight between people wanting to be, you know, what would you say, stimulated intellectually, amen, and what goes on actually in your spirit spiritually, what actually stirs that, builds that faith, creates that expectation, amen, causes that hope to become grounded, anchored, amen. It's so, so, so powerful. Things in your mind change. Hallelujah. John 14, 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Acts 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power. Everybody say power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now, you know, there's a, a bit of a thing that's gone on in the body of Christ over, over all these years is whether people call him the Holy Spirit or Holy Spirit. Well, you know, I have a scripture here that says the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Amen. I can speak to him, Holy Spirit. But there is a place to say the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't allow things to become familiar with God. Allow great honor, great reverence to always exist. Don't treat, don't, don't treat him like your buddy. He's the Holy Spirit of God, and we worship him. We honor him. He's not diminished. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So Acts 1 verse 8 says this, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In the Amplified it says this, but you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem. Amen. Where's that? Home right here in Tulsa. You shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea. Where's that? Sand Springs. Katusa. <laughs> Bixby. Amen. Mounds. To the outer bounds. Amen. Of Beggs, Oklahoma. <laughs> Praise the Lord to the outer bounds of the earth. Praise God. Amen. The Greek word, isn't this lovely? Praise the Lord. Well, the definition of power means power in action in performing miracles. Power in action in performing miracles. Number two, divine ability Mighty works, miracle energy, and supernatural force. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I know you know all this and, and all those different things, but I just believe that this is the Spirit of the Lord. And I believe He's looking us refreshed in what we do. Because this is millennial. We'll throw it down in a heartbeat. I mean, you try to get people out of here on Sunday night, and they get pastor out in the car, and they all come in here and have to have an afterglow service. I'm just driving out, and I'm telling you, they're all back in here trying to have their own service. <laughs> people sending me videos of it all. You know what, Karn and myself were doing? Rejoicing. 
Amen? Because it's not me that's there that's stirring it up. It's the Holy Spirit that's here stirring it up. Amen? So if you left early Sunday night, you missed it. Because <laughs> they were having an afterglow of a time up here. Amen? Dancing and praising God. Praise the Lord. It's so wonderful. And leaping. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number three, the Greek word is dynamis. The English word dynamite is derived from this. Amen? So I guess that you've got a few sticks of dynamite in the inside of you. Amen? Amen? Yeah. And that you're more powerful than what you ever give yourself credit for. And what the enemy really hopes and prays, yes, prays, that you never, ever find this power in the inside of you. Because once you do, his work in your life is over. I declare it tonight, the work of Satan in your life is over. In the name of Jesus. Because of the power that works within you. In the name of Jesus. Stop your texting. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Sarah had to let Joel's leg to let him know I'm coming over this direction. <laughs> he was on his phone. <laughs> and Sarah thumped his leg and said, He's coming. <laughs> It's horrible. I mean, some of you want to sit in the front row. It's horrible. <laughs> they are made to sit up here. <laughs> How many people love Pastors Joel and Sarah? Come on, you can do better than that. They are amazing. <laughs> Watch it. I might not have anybody help me get out of here tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, it's great. At least I've left my wife alone tonight uh, at this stage. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, he said that we would be witnesses. What, are, what is the definition of a witness? The definition of a witness is this, to give or be evidence, one who furnishes proof one who demonstrates, substantiates, or verifies his testimony with an exhibition of evidence. With an exhibition. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, it's time for you to make an exhibition of yourself. Praise the Lord. Amen. An exhibition. <laughs> an exhibition. Praise the Lord. You know, coming from the world that I came from and, and having to do things in courtrooms. I was on the right side of the thing. I wasn't on the wrong side of the thing. But even bringing cases before a judge, all of those different things, amen. Really what we were bringing was evidence, you know. We didn't want third party. What we wanted were eyewitnesses. Third party was sticky, it was hard to, if anybody's ever been in the legal world, it's just, it's hard uh, to make that stick. But eyewitnesses, I actually saw him do it. I saw her do it. Now we have a hard, fast case that is being built. Are you with me? So I've said this for many years. I think that the body of Christ in this recent time, we have become more third party, or it's called hearsay evidence. We, we're not really eyewitnesses. Pardon me? But what did you say? <laughs> Ooh, it's homing in. It's homing in. <laughs> but how many people want to be? Okay, so lift your hand and say, I am an eyewitness of the power of God. Hallelujah. So let's, let's start on case number one. I am a witness of the power of God operating in my life. <laughs> Isn't that good? Yes. 
And I thank him for that right now. I'm an eyewitness of it. And guess what? My, my, my spouse is a witness of the power of God working in my life. My children are witnesses of the power of God working in my life. This is how we hold our families in the kingdom. Because it's not just a message, it's our reality. Amen, we receive this in the name of Jesus. We're, we're just not preaching. Amen, we're evidence, we're manifesting. Amen, we can bring the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. In your living room with your family, if you just give it a couple of minutes, guess what? Your family can experience the presence of the Lord. I want you to receive this tonight. Come on. It's easy. Well, it's, it's, it's not that easy, Pastor Paul, or it would all be. It, it is easy. Why? Because he wants to be there. <laughs> There's no place that he would rather be than to be with your family around the table. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you. Sweet Spirit of God, you're amazing. We just worship you with all of our hearts. Simbri Amanasu. Isn't it beautiful? so amazing, Father. The sensitivity is increasing on your life, Andrew. Come on, you can't talk about him without him. Showing up. Come on, how many people know that you can learn the anointing? And that's what scripture told us is that they did not so learn Christ. And Christ is not Jesus' last name. It's Jesus, the anointed one, and his anointing. Pastor, why do you sing these little songs? Because he always comes. All glory, all honor, all worship and Come on, you signed him beautiful. Every one of you could stand in the middle of Walgreens, and I'm not telling you to sing a song. Say, oh, thank God for that. I'm not telling you to sing a song. But you can stand in aisle six and say, Father, <laughs> touch this place. That that what I carry touch these people. you know what will happen? They will begin to sense the presence of the Lord. Yes. 
Sempre a mai a so Ori So you can you can realize then that because that was on David when he played for the king that what was on the king demonically had to had to subside it, it because it it cannot compete The anointing does this. It's not the fancy footwork of a pastor or a worship leader. It's the anointing. But the pastor or a worship leader or another minister who's minister and leading in a body, they have to become sensitive. To know that anointing is available and that anointing will do what it needs to do if you give it place. How many people understand this? And this, not just in a church. You go to many of these prayer meetings that are being had here at church, you'll sense the presence of the Lord. You'll sense that anointing. That anointing comes to work to bring power, make power, make power available to draw. most precious friends in the early days of my walk with the Lord, a man called Michael Holmes. Michael had a blue sunbeam. We were kind of like cut from the same cloth. He was, I think, about eight years older than me. But yet, we just had this just real connection in God. And he would play the piano and I would play the organ. And we would just jam for hours at times and have so much fun. And one of the greatest choirs of Northern Ireland at that time was, was the Church of God in Glamacken. It was Glamacken Choir. 
and they were just phenomenal. It was like 200 strong, but they were phenomenal. They jammed it out. They just were phenomenal. But I'm telling you the presence of God. And my, Michael had a blue Talbot Sunbeam. I don't know if you know what that was. It's a car back there. And we used to put the cassettes and, and we used to put the windows down and we used to jam all the way, like 30 miles up to Glamacken Church just to sit in their choir concert. And we would just have the time of our lives. And I'm telling you, we were as white as white, but by the time we drove 30 miles, we were as black as black. I'm telling you, it was like, we just changed skin color on the way. That's what it will do to you. It will change you into another mind, this anointing. We would laugh and laugh. He would look at me and go, come on, Jermaine. And we would laugh and carry on. It was so much fun. But what were we doing? We were learning the anointing. There were times we drove on the road and tears would run down our face. Just the two, two of us driving. Just driving. He was driving, I wasn't. Singing, the top of our head, just the top of our voices. Harmonizing. We always looked for an excuse to get in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> He's so wonderful. Let me finish with this. E.W. Kenyon said this, one miracle from heaven is worth 1,000 sermons. One miracle from heaven is worth a thousand sermons. You know what would be wonderful to do this, this summer? It's for us to go out to the lake. Just take the instruments and just have a worship evening. evening. How many people would love that? I'm just not talking about our worship team. I'm talking about if you have an instrument, you bring it. Some will work it out. <laughs> How many people would love to do that? Pastor Karn said, maybe towards the fall, when it's, when it's not so hot. <laughs> Here's me, I'm just salivating in the presence of the Lord. And, you know, Karn's going, it's too hot. Praise the Lord. I want to do that this year. Some of the greatest times we had was, were on the banks of the Irish Sea down at Crawfordsburn. Two, three o'clock in the morning, the instruments, the fire lit, just right there at the water's edge, just worshiping the Lord. Pardon me? <laughs> Did you all hear what she said? It's a lot cooler in Northern Ireland and no mosquitoes. <laughs> Okay, I gotta let you go home. Praise the Lord. I'm not getting any love here in the front row. Praise. No, I'm just. We're going to have to go home and have a conversation. I'm going to start singing tonight, and hopefully, whatever that is leaves. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, praise the name of the Lord. Aren't you tired of religion? 
We love the Lord with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our souls. And this is what causes you to fall in love with him more and more and more. This leads you besides the waters. It makes you lie down in green pastures. My brother and sister, I can hardly wait for y'all to be involved in worship. Come on, it's beautiful. The anointing. Do you know? You cannot mistake someone that's been with the Lord. Man, I've seen a lot of skill in the body of Christ over all these years, but I'm telling you, when you meet someone that's been in the presence of the Lord, it's different. It's just different. Two men, two women can preach the exact same sermon. One will be potent and the other will be impotent. One will be full of seed, the other will yield nothing. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He said, abide in me and I, my word, will abide in you.